Primetime Top 25 College Football returns to TBS on Saturday nights beginning September 14th. Featuring the Big 12 and Pac-10 conferences, it's Big Play Saturday on the Superstation. Took that fine All-American young woman and placed her squarely in harm's way. And it had nothing to do with sending her out with Wally. <laughs> Very nice. Jeff Gordon is the leader. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is second. Rusty Wallace third. Bobby Labonte fourth. Ward Burton has just taken fifth from Jimmy Spencer. And I see a Golden Benny Award winner, Bill Elliott, has gone a lap down. Yeah. Elliott, Ricky Craven, Joni Machek, Jeff Green, and John Andretti all overtaken by the leader here in these last few moments. And Ryan Newman, the 12 car. And this 12 Altel car was the fastest in happy hour yesterday. And they did have a full hour practice. And but he's going to lap down. That's the problem here at a half mile racetrack. If you get one car that gets hooked up like Jeff Gordon is right now, and you're having just a little trouble, it doesn't take long for that leader to put you a lap down. Tony Stewart running. Well, there's a change for third. Bobby Labonte around Rusty Wallace and picks up that spot. All right, now, where's Tony Stewart, Bobby's teammate? There he is. A different paint scheme there tonight on that 20. We talked about how tough it is to communicate. Teams are trying to do some things about that, Matt. Well, Alan, retired major Pat Frosher may not be a well-known name to the fans at home. He's got a lot of fans up and down Pitt Road. He came up with a system at the spring race here in Bristol one year ago to use something he learned on the flight line with the Marines. They took an extra-large earmuff, engineered it for the face so that they could talk through it to cut down the noise so the crew chief can be heard by the driver. It has been a big fan favorite. Now you can hear the crew chief a lot easier than the driver. Major Pat doesn't travel the races any longer due to a motorcycle accident. He still works for racing radios, but the crew chiefs down here, they sure love what this retired Marine engineered for them. But of course, as we heard on Countdown to Green, Joe Gibbs' radio is disabled. Yes, he can't talk to these drivers or the crews. He can hear, though. He can listen. Tony started back in 26th place, up to 6th. Defending winner of this race. And Tony really is the guy with, with about the most momentum of the uh, championship contenders, if you will. Tony's in fourth place in points now. He's only 84 behind leader Sterling Marlin. And here's a guy in a team who have been historically, historically in their, what, four seasons on the circuit, second half runners. It's like they don't get going until the end of May. And, it, it, you know, every year... Elliot Sadler back on the racetrack in the 21 car. And every year you wonder if these guys could just get it going the first half, talking about Tony Stewart, they would really have something going for them. But every year they seem to just don't get that start that most other teams do. You know, you thought Elliot was mad before. He's really mad having to drive that car at Bristol now for another 250 laps the way it is. Oh, Mark Martin. A little bit of a bump from Jeff Gordon. A little bit of chrome horn there. Whoa! Hang on, Mark. 20th place car. A lap down. And fighting through all that traffic, Dale Jr. is right with Jeff Gordon. I wonder if Jeff Gordon did any damage to his right front fender on that contact with Mark. Doesn't look like it. Now, it looked, looked pretty clean there. Hey, come on. This is this is Bristol. This isn't a place where those fenders are, are all critical like they would have been in Michigan last week. All right. They're running 130 miles per hour. Hey, man, look at this. Jimmy Johnson in fifth spot, just 132 points back. But he is a big loser of that group right there, Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, because he was only 60 points back when the race started. But almost half the race to run yet. A lot of things can't happen. More heavy traffic for the leaders. Michael Waltrip about to lose a, a second lap to Jeff Gordon. Okay, now. Loudest racetrack on the circuit. Cars going around at full speed. Can we hear Bill Weber, who wants to tell us about Mark? Oh, huh? no! Junior just drives by Jeff Gordon. Sorry, Bill. Stole your thunder. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. back out in front. All right, let's see if we can hear Weber. Bill, what do you got? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you, and I'll try my, my best, that Mark Martin's car has been very tight all night. As he just pulled it through, he is concerned about wearing out that right front tire. Been tight all night, came in second in points, not having the night the two-time winner won. How was that? Hey, good. I heard you. He said that Mark Martin was concerned about wearing out the right front tire. The car is tight. He's turning the steering wheel, and the car is sliding across the racetrack. And what's that? Did you just get into Jeremy Mayfield there? I see some smoke fly. A little bit of a bump, yeah. yeah it looks like there's a little damage here on the right front fender. A Bernhardt load was from there earlier. I don't know. Coming to halfway. And those two cars you're looking at on the screen are the only two that have led this race through its first half. A lot has been said about Jeff Gordon's 0 for streak this year. The fact that he has yet to go to victory lane, riding the longest winless streak of his career. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. hasn't exactly set the sport on fire this year. He's got the win at Talladega back in April, but... I think a lot of people expected him to contend for the championship this year, and here he is back 16th in points. Well, when he finished fifth at Martinsville and then went to Talladega and won, I really felt like that Tony Urey and Bill Earnhardt Jr., this entire team, really had something going. But I don't know, somewhere about June or somewhere, things started not going well for these guys. But the last two weeks, at Michigan last week, he ran well, and obviously he's doing very well here tonight. I thought I saw some smoke fly a second ago when Junior tried to put Jeremy Mayfield the lap down. Let's go back and take a look. On board. Oh, yeah. MC, yeah. That looked like it was Jeremy's left front to Junior's right rear. So that'd be okay. But no, that shouldn't do any damage. Jeremy a lap down in 20th place. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to put Kyle Petty a lap down now. Kyle's still on the lead lap in 18th. But I don't think for long. Dominant performance so far for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon. We're just past halfway in the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. You're watching NASCAR on TNT.